All right, today I'm doing a video on my end of the month routine. I'm gonna do my 40 gallon water change. <clears throat> I'm gonna clean out the ASM skimmer. I'm gonna change GFO and carbon. Change the filter sock, and it looks like I'm gonna probably do some pruning on the uh, uh, Calerpa Mexicana. It's getting a little straggly in there. Um, clean up some of the rocks if there's like any you know algae that needs to be taken off, which it doesn't really look like there is so probably be all good there get all my crap cleaned up up here this is like acclimating corals acclimating corals feeding dosing the uh, coral SL so just tidy everything up clean the inside of the cabinet out just mix up some salt real quick and I'll be uh, changing the GFO and everything out when I uh, the water change so we've got at least an hour before this salt um, gets all mixed in I don't really mix my salt overnight or anything I just give it about an hour or two and it's usually just fine to go right, let's see what that gets us Go clean the refractometer right here. Go clean this in some fresh water. That way it's zeroed. Put some fresh water on it real quick. And we're at zero. Perfect. Just dry it off. And uh, wait for the salt to get dissolved. Check our salinity. Got a mag 12 in here. Mixing up the water. Feels real good. Right, right, we're gonna give that some time to do its thing. And then we'll be back for more. All right, so the salt's all mixed up. We're at 1.025 now. I'm um, getting ready to start draining the tank. Um, it's ghetto, nothing special, just a hose that I got connected to another hose that leaks. So I got a towel under there and I just siphon it right out the front door. First thing that I got, I got to do though is uh, shut the return pump down so I just unplug it. Let the tank drain down um, which I want, um, to the overflow level till it stops draining basically and the overflow will start going crazy. Um, and then I just siphon it down and I got it pretty much it worked out perfectly uh, that amount of water that I mix um, I just take out this much down to the bottom of this overflow here and that's a perfect amount of water change for the the, uh, the amount of water that I mix so that's why I got that piece of tape on the barrel so we're just gonna wait for this to uh, finish draining down takes a little bit of time and the overflow is starting to come down I'm going to clean the overflow out, so I'm going to leave the old filter sock in after I get the... The reefers get a ladder right here. But you can see some of these corals here, like this Aura Joe is growing out of the water. The, um... I forget what that coral is called. It's a green... <sighs> crap. Poslapora. That one's damn near growing out of the water now, so... And then I'll pick up some corals that fell. I noticed some of my euphelia, the uh, epoxy let go. So I got just a little bit left here. So we'll see if I can't get those glued down. Then I got some coral I'm going to take out and sell. I got a colony of Duncans that I fragged off over there because the anemone was killing them. So I fragged a whole bunch of heads. Um, so yeah, tank cleaning day today. But uh, looks like we're... Right out the front door. Micron filter socks, um, obviously seven inch ring. Um, these are not aquarium filter socks. I got tired of paying the high dollar price tag for aquarium filter socks. I mean, they were like almost 20 bucks a piece for a filter this size, and that was just ridiculous. So I get, um, I buy five of these at a time for $15. They're actually for um, making your own. Um, 
diesel. So I get these from a guy out here in Chandler that makes them for people that make their own um, diesel fuel. And I guess they got a filter, whatever they got a filter. And these are what they use. It's made out of the same exact material. Huge, excellent quality. I can get them down to uh, five microns, but I use the 50 microns. Um, damn near acts like a protein skimmer. But uh, these are the f filter socks I use, so we'll be changing that out after I clean out that overflow and everything. And then uh, I'm going to change the filter sock on this tank too. I might do a water change on that one, I'm not sure. But there you go, now you can really see these coils coming out of the water. This would make it easy to frag, maybe I should just do it now. Yeah, I don't feel like it. So, yeah, here's the tank coming down. Do, do, do. A little boring, but yeah. So let's see where we're at here. We are done. So we'll just pull the tube out here. And walk this right out the front door. Take this tube back. I gotta go grab a pump real quick. All right, now just drag this barrel real close to the tank. And then I put the little, now we're pumping water in as the return pumps, putting it back into the tank. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit though so this pump can catch up. This is a slower pump. And I'll just do that real quick. I was gonna use the mat. So, ba -bum. and then uh, when the tank gets filled up and it starts cycling normally, I'll get in there and I'll just move all that detritus around so it'll uh, get caught in the filter sock. waiting game what do you guys do when you're waiting for your tanks to fill up this is what I do just look be bored vape Take dry hits, why not? Everybody's doing it. I gotta change the batteries in this fucker, man. It's hitting pretty weak, but it's almost two days of vaping on this fucker. Let me turn that pump down a little bit. I want to wait for the water to fill up. 